Well, we're here at the Sydney Rally, August 14th, 2013, and we're here to save public land hunting in New South Wales. We know Barry O'Farrell has become very untrustworthy, and he has now put an attack on law-abiding firearms owners, shooters and fishermen here in the state of New South Wales. So a lot of people put a lot of effort to come down here today and fight for our rights, which were taken by Barry O'Farrell. Listen, it's a fairly sad state of affairs that so many of us have got to take a day off, time off work to come down here, stand in front of Parliament House and effectively ask for our hunting back when none of the people in front of me here did a single thing wrong. I got a copy of the Dunn Review 45 minutes after the axe was dropped on the Game Council. As the uh, managers and DPI were talking to the Game Council staff in Orange, 10 minutes after that meeting started, the City Morning Hell was posting stories. Now, you can't tell me that that was not leaked to them prior to that happening, because that's a very, very quick way to get a, a, an article up on, on a website. We ran the largest hunter education program that's ever been run in the Southern Hemisphere. For all of us here, if we are going to have our hunting continue, if we're going to be, uh, our kids are going to be hunting, then the only way that's going to happen is it is a safe pastime, and the key to that is hunter education. And I've had a number of business owners in some of those areas ring me wanting to know when public land hunting is going to be open again because they're starting to feel the pinch. Guys in blaze orange hats aren't there buying fuel, food, uh, groceries and so forth when they're going out camping, and they're starting to feel it. But the important thing is, if we're ever going to get our public land hunting back, we've got to stand firm on this, we've got to keep the pressure on the government, and we've got to let them know that the way they've treated us is appalling in this way. If we'd done something wrong, that was different. But you guys did nothing wrong. Thank you. Thanks, John. Now I'm going to introduce Peter Johnson, President of Nepean Hunters Club. Uh, I'd like to uh, echo John's sentiments to every one of you that's here today. I thank you very much for the sacrifice that you've given up today to be here. I know some of you are losing wages. You've come here because you've got a, a resolve in your stomach that speaks strong, speaks volume, that you want your public land hunting back. Thank you very much for that. Okay, why are we here? We are here because of an act of political bastardry from inside that house. Okay, there's nothing to do about anything wrong with public land hunting. We are not the rabble that they want to make us up believe, but we are the victims of a deal to de deal Robert and Robert out of power and us out of power. Okay, it's not going to happen because you people are here today to prove it's not going to happen. Okay, thank you for being here. Okay, now my spin on this is not that it's just to squash public land hunting. It's going to go further than that because with the abolition of the Game Council, next will be clubs like ours are not going to be approved AHOs, okay, approved hunting organisations. If there's no Game Council, what do you need an AHO for? Okay, an AHO gives you a genuine reason for your firearms licence. A lot of people are members of clubs because they do not have access to private land. Okay? We are the next target. We need strength in numbers in your clubs. Okay? Without the strength in the clubs, we are going to be divided, we are going to be defeated. If I sound like a unionist, I'm sorry, but that's what happens. They're trying to divide us. Okay? If you've noticed in some of the uh, diatribes that have come out of Robin Parker's office, she wants to put one tenure across private land hunting. Okay, private land hunting, which means you might have to sign up to do this stupid course they're going to do for the National Parks and Wildlife for a culling program, which does not utilise the resource. Did you know, under the National Parks model, you go out, it's a pig kill, you can only kill pigs. Can you take the meat? Can you utilise the wild pork? No, it's dead. It's carrying on the ground. That's not proper use of a resource. Okay, I'm here to fight to keep that right because just down the road, where we started the rally from, there's a fountain. You've got the goddess Diana down there with the bow. She's slain a deer. If that's not proof of our cultural heritage of hunters, I'll stand here today and get struck by lightning.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My colleague Robert Borsak is standing here right beside me. <coughs> There's probably about 600, 700 here. And as Peter said, pretty much all of you have had to sacrifice something to be here today. Wages, a day of your rec leave, uh, probably other, other things that you should have been able to do because you shouldn't have to come out into the street to fight for something which has nothing to do with any wrongdoing on your part. Both Peter and John are quite correct. This has nothing to do with the Game Council. It's nothing to do with the 20,000 licensed hunters. It's nothing to do with all this orange that you see. You have done an incredible job over the last seven years. We believe, Robert and I, and we've got a fair bit of evidence to back this up, that uh, all, all this is is just a political move. Game Council was far too successful. Game Council was a model that tested the paradigms of public service and did it in a brilliant manner. Shooters and Fishers Party, unfortunately, were seen to be too close to the Game Council and therefore your success reflected onto us. Can't have that, can you? Can't have a minor party having any impact or putting good policy forward. That's a no-no. So, on behalf of the Shooters and Fishers Party, I apologise that you have been uh, so badly dealt with because a certain gentleman in there um, thinks that it's a good political hit on the Shooters and Fishers Party. Well, I think he's made a mistake. And I think that uh, the people in New South Wales are going, to, are going to come to understand that what's on that banner there is pretty right. Mr O'Farrell is untrustworthy. He welched on a deal, he skunked us, and you are the victims. Not Robert and I, you. You are the victims. You've been used for political purposes and it is not right. When you go home tonight, write that letter, write to your local member. Don't worry about writing to Mr O'Farrell or Katrina Hodgkinson. Write to your local member. Make sure your local member understands that what has been made personal to you, you are now making personal to them. This is an incredible uh, march and rally this morning. I've seen, you know, green rallies and, uh, and and this one beats them all. Not a word was said coming up that that road. And when you go back, I think you'll probably find that not a word will be said. We've demonstrated to the people of this state and to the police force just how uh, law abiding we are. And that's what we are, law, abiding firearm owners. We're also... We're also pig doggers, bow hunters, people who use ferrets, and fishermen too. We aren't going to go away. We aren't going to give up. We're going to be there for a long time. Uh, and believe me, as I said on the ABC, we're going to get square. We need you to make sure that you protect yourselves. We can do as much as we can and sometimes we get done over, but you need to protect yourselves. Write letters, make phone calls, go and see your own local politicians and tell them how you feel. That is the most effective thing you can do. And ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much for taking the time off your busy days to come here. Sometimes a lot of these rallies we see in Macquarie Street, they're renter crowds, they're people who don't really have jobs. That isn't the case, that isn't the case here. So thank you for the sacrifice. When you go back home, not only write a letter, but make sure you talk to one of your mates who's not here today, who couldn't get away from their job. Shift workers, pe people in emergency services couldn't get here. Go and talk to them and say it was a great rally. Um, we were well behaved. We, uh, we demonstrated to the people in New South Wales that we are not the rat bags that Mr O'Farrell and his government try to portray us as. We are law abiding people from all walks of life. Suits, shorts, doesn't matter whether you're a plumber or a, a, a brain surgeon. You've seen the Game Council's ads, you know, plumber here, hunter there. That's what you are. You're all ethical, you are de dedicated to what you do, and you're providing a huge public service. Please don't demand your money back from the Game Council or the DPI. Instead, demand that they deliver you the product for which you've paid, which is access to the state forests. State Forest is good.
and I'd, uh, I'd like to, um, to hear a round of applause for the organisers of this event. It's the first time they've done it. They're a bit nervous about it, but they've done a fantastic job. Let's hear it. Thank you, Rob. Also, guys, while I'm here quickly and everyone's here, it's also Robert Borsak's birthday today. Like everyone said, guys, thank you for coming. I know everyone's taking a day off work. I've taken a day off work. Everyone's taking a day off work.